Sit back, relax, and enjoy as Don Tony gives you news and reviews from AEW. Welcome to the party! Oh my God! That's your coming city! NXT. It's over! Cross is here to ransack NXT soul! And indie wrestling. It's Wednesday night, Don Oh my. Know what's happening in the world of wrestling without the hate and clickbait. And now, your host, Don Tony. No offense. No offense. I'm watching the AEW main event on the TV. I'm watching the NXT main event on my computer. And I'm on my laptop taking notes. I look over to the NXT main event match. And I see Finn Balor just standing on the corner. Standing on the corner. Carrying Cross, Standing next to him because they're teaming up. And if you could have ad-libbed, they were like, hey, you know, it's supposed to be nice tomorrow. Uh, you, you, know, you maybe want to get a latte in the morning? And they're just hanging out. And one of the tag team champions is on the floor, and they're just the cameras on them. I look over to the TV, and I see this. I mean, look, you don't want to see blood and extreme violence like that every single week. But you look at the NXT main event, and you look at the AEW main event side-by-side side tonight, I mean, it's it's not even close. It's not even close. They tore it up. Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker tore it up. Um, I've been saying this for a long time now, and I know a lot of you have been saying it as well. You know, Britt Baker has improved substantially. Yes, in these type of matches, you know, you're not move, counter move, counter move, counter move, chain wrestling in this and that. But you could see the instinct of hitting a move, hitting a counter move, taking a spot. You could see the instincts kicking in. Now, let's also be honest that if that ladder shot in the corner busted her head open, you know, the visual is awesome, but, you know, uh, that's not supposed to happen. You know, you want to, you know, you know what I mean. But you cannot, you cannot take that away from the women tonight. You know, I thought back, you remember the history show I used to cover? The first women's main event on Raw? many years ago wasn't it stephanie versus lita that might have been the first women's main event i don't know i don't i didn't do research tonight we've had a couple of women's main events close out raw since we've had some women close out nxt but i gotta be honest with you from bell to bell probably thunder rosa versus Britt baker is my favorite women's match to close a televised event. Not pay-per-views. But um I I Ted Turner, I think she got cut open hard way. That that I I look, I can't criticize it. I can't criticize it. I mean, um, you know, what do you say? If she, if she bladed, then you got people saying, Oh, that was uh that's a horrible blade job. If she got busted open legit. Trish, no, Ted Turner, Trish versus Lita. I don't know if that's the first women's main event. I think it was Stephanie. Yes, mighty, mighty, you are on, mighty, mighty. Stephanie versus Lita. The Rock was the special guest referee. Absolutely. In fact, I even think, didn't Lita win the women's title that night and the Hardys carried her on their shoulders to the back? I think that's what that was. By the way, Welcome, everybody. It is Wednesday night, March 17th, 2021. We're in a little bit of Heart Foundation, and you want to know something? No bullshit. I obviously, I, I shouldn't be doing this, but... I think this is the first time since I was maybe 15 years old. I don't know if you could see it. I'm wearing a large! I'm wearing a large! Holy shit! 
That's how long I have this shirt. I have this shirt since the middle 80s, and I got it on tonight. So, little tribute to the Hart Foundation. There you go. One of the greatest tag teams of all time. I know Eric Bischoff seems to have a little bit of a vendetta against Bret Hart because he didn't get his money's worth on the contract. But his recent comments saying that Bret Hart was never a big-time drawer. Eric, you know, I, I understand you and Jim Cornette and everyone else love to fish and reel everybody in. But, uh, yeah, let's let's not throw slack. Hey, you know, maybe I'm a pack rat. Is that what it's called, a pack rat? Somebody that keeps almost everything, even stuff that they probably shouldn't? You know, who, I have no business having shirts from the middle 80s still in my collection. But I did, and I wanted to wear it today. I think the colors actually look pretty vibrant still. But uh, what an awesome main event for AEW tonight. They tore it up. Chairs, ladders, thumbtacks, uh, tables. Reba, Rebel, Reba, whatever you want to call it. You know, she even took a little bit of a beating today. I really enjoyed that main event. Obviously, it's not something you want to see every week, but that is going to be a memorable one. And let's also be honest. Thunder Rosa has taken probably more L's than most of you out there feel she should have received the last year. Um, she needed this win tonight. She needed this W. But you know what? Trust me, please, do not take this out of context. I'm not trying to compare Britt Baker to Steve Austin's careers. But you know what I was left with tonight? The same feeling that I was left after WrestleMania 13. Steve Austin that night, even though he lost, he won. And I think Britt Baker tonight, even though she lost, I really think she won. Thunder Rosa doesn't need to prove anything to all of us. We know how awesome she is. Britt Baker is obviously the chip on the shoulder. That dentist office match with Big Swall was one of the worst things I've ever seen in my history of watching wrestling. And I've been watching it 79. Well, it's still considered 70s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s. I'm watching six decade watching wrestling. Now, King of Hueco Mundo, shout out to you. Let's keep it in perspective, too. You know, not everything tonight with AEW was spectacular. As NXT, I think that's pretty much every week. But we'll get into both shows, and we're only going to stick to recapping both shows tonight. On Friday, I will give you um, my quick thoughts for NWA's event this weekend, which is actually turning out to be something really solid. Let's hope that they could carry it beyond this one pay-per-view. I don't want to feel like this was just a quick money grab and then it's back to the, you know, the feeling we had in August of 2020 when they tried to, you know, work with that other God's forsaken promotion. So we'll do that Friday. We'll talk about WWE Friday, but I will say this. I will say this. You know, I have little graphics and stuff, and I know this does nothing to do with AEW NXT tonight, but I have to bring it up because a lot of you have already brought it up. Um, you know, I don't, I, I'm not a news journalist. I opine. I give you my opinions. We have conversations. But I do have sources. You know, a lot of these goofs out there, their sources are reading tweets and reading Reddit reports. Christian is the surprise for AEW. And you have all these people out there, oh, you see, I reported it right. Yeah, they fucking read a Reddit post three hours before the pay-per-view that Christian is at AEW. That doesn't make you a journalist. But that's how people are. I've been doing this since 1997. I have some connections. But there's a million journalists out there. I think what makes us special, and I mean me and all of you out there, is we can have a conversation about what we're watching. Not everything that I like, you like, and not everything you like, I like. But we can have... A nice conversation, get together, have a difference of opinion, look at things in the view of a wrestling fan. But, you know, once in a while, if I want to do the research, I will contact who I need to contact. I told all of you out there that I was in contact with WWE Corporate about these, and I got an answer. Now, I know on the net there's a little bit floating around there today, but 
tomorrow and Friday, I'll get into this in more detail as far as what's going to happen with these unused network cards and shit like that. But on Monday, when the WrestleMania tickets were delayed, postponed, you saw all that clickbait garbage out there. Mish and I came up here and told you on Monday for about 15 minutes exactly why the tickets were delayed. And we also said that by Friday, Saturday at the absolute latest, but likely Friday, so they could plug, plug it on SmackDown, tickets will be back on sale. Everything that we said on Monday was 1,000% correct. And no one out there, you know, because you know how it is with Mish and myself, you know, we don't, we get no play from all these people out there. You know, I don't think that I'm a threat for a lot of these websites, but you see, you see exactly what I'm talking about. Every once in a while, when we do want to break something, nobody will cover it. So I have little graphics and stuff in the bag. And if you're wondering why it opened up with that little uh, video thing at the very beginning, if there is something in wrestling that is really worthwhile that we should research and get some answers to, all you got to do is just light the lamp into the sky and that will alert me to do some research for all of you out there. So no bat. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 hold, 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 hold. We don't need to play the whole intro again. Don't want to piss anybody off. But yeah, you just send the send the signal and I'll do some research for you. So anyway, so tonight we're just gonna review AEW and NXT. I'm still trying to play catch up with sleep. But don't forget, tomorrow night we will have Q and A S D T. We're gonna done and do another who, who am I contest. And don't forget, don't forget, if you didn't tune in last week, you probably don't know about this. Uh tomorrow I am giving away this this raw signed magazine it's signed by matt hardy jeff hardy edge and christian this was you know when they started becoming big time stars it is jsa authenticated so you could be assured that it's 100 percent legit and look if whoever wins tomorrow doesn't want this as a prize then you could get a shot at the prize wheel or the balls and guess what guess what i think next week we're gonna have a plinko game Anybody ever see the prices right with those Plinko games? You throw the little chip down, and wherever it lands, you win. I think we're going to launch a little Plinko game next week. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to put more footage of yours truly doing indie wrestling and indie wrestle crap stuff. I don't. We may take a week break from it. I got to see, you know, as far as what is on the agenda for tomorrow. But we will have a lot of fun. Uh, Big T, I have autographs from everything. I have everything, you know. You follow the shows on a weekly basis. A couple of weeks ago, I gave a uh, autographed magazine signed by Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon, and it was Beckett authenticated. I think Mike from Your Best Bargains won it on a Thursday night. But anyway, enough of that. We don't. That's a cheap plug for tomorrow, obviously. A um, couple of things from tonight. Now I'm gonna get her bio together so everybody can get a little idea about her. But WWE announced today that coming soon to NXT, some people pronounce her name now, Sari, Sarai. In Japan, it was spelled S-A-R-R, uh, S-A-R-E-E-E, -E, I believe. So now they're, they're spelling it S-A-R-R-A-Y, uh, Sarai, I think it is. She is phenomenal. I was, I went on, no joke, I went on YouTube earlier today to see how you pronounce her name. I mean, yes, I do speak a little Japan now, a little Japanese, but um, not always perfect on pronouncing the name. So while I was on YouTube, I said, hey, let me go look at some of her work. Holy shit, is she fucking talented. She is talented. She is talented. So I will get a little bio together. Maybe we'll bring it up Friday. Maybe we'll bring it up next week. She hasn't de you know, debuted yet for the NXT brand. We talked about her signing a while ago. Now they're ready to bring her to the main brand. Tonight, 
you saw the beginning of the end of Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. I don't know if anybody knows, you know, where they're going with that, but uh, they are now planting the seed that Dakota Kai feels that they should remain a tag team, go for the tag team titles, and this is and that. Dakota Kai kind of, you know, they may even go in a direction where Dakota Kai feels that she's more deserving of a title shot against Io Shirai instead of Raquel Gonzalez. Dallas. This is ultimately going to cause a rift between Raquel and Dakota Kai, and they will split. Um, take over. You have Io Shirai and Raquel Gonzalez, which is pretty much a lock. After what happened on NXT tonight, you know, the build that tension between the two, even though the match was announced earlier, you have Karrion Cross versus Finn Balor for the NXT championship. Uh, Jordan Devlin, we've been hyping up his return for about a month he was ready to return you know i appreciate everybody who was shocked and surprised today but honestly especially for those podcasters and journalists out there if you were shocked and surprised that jordan devlin showed up tonight you obviously don't watch nxt on a weekly basis um because jordan devlin last week was pretty much all set that he was going to show up tonight but it was very cool to see him and my god my god I almost think Walter, if, if, if too bad was still in COVID, and too, you know, I, I would do it as a disclaimer for real. If I was able to go to WrestleMania this year, if I was able to go to takeovers this year, and there was nothing COVID going on, and you could actually pay for it, you know, sometimes like you could pay for a cameo and somebody gives you a shout out. You know, you go to, you know, like uh, one of the WrestleMania, you know, events. And you could take a picture with a wrestler. You could get an autograph. You could kind of like simulcast and pretend like you're calling a match. I swear to God, I would pay money and sign a waiver and a disclaimer. I would pay money to take this shirt off and just let Walter chop me once. Seriously, as long as it's recorded and as long as I could watch it in slow motion and just see fat deposits on my chest that I don't even know exist, just to see it in slow motion go like, my God. To me, Walter's chops equal sign. Walter's chops are the equivalent of JBL's clothesline from hell. If you want to go further back, Stan Hansen's clothesline. And we look, we could bring up other people as well. But for the majority of you out there who, you know, follow mainstream wrestling, you know, JBL's clothesline from hell to me is the equivalent of Walter's chops. My God. Dream 101, what's going on? And VJ, uh, you I hope to God that you signed for that, got that package. I shipped you the AEW title. I shipped you an autograph, I think, magazine and stuff. I shipped you a whole box of goodies. And I, you had said to me like two, three weeks ago, I didn't get nothing. And I'm looking at the Canadian post tracking, and it says, left at the door. I hope you got it, man, because I probably won't be giving something like that away again. But Walter's chops are fucking incredible. Walter versus Tommaso Ciampa is going to be a lot of fun. Jordan Devlin versus Santos Escobar to just determine who is the true Cruiserweight champion. Technically on record, Jordan Devlin is, you know, but, you know, Jordan Devlin is back. Hey, you know, thank you for, you know, keeping the title fresh. Santos Escobar is basically saying, no, no, no. I, I you know, reinvented this Cruiserweight division. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Timothy Thatcher not being there today. I have no idea why. You all heard the rumors about the COVID breakout, which really did happen last week. But, you know, for these people, that would be like, no fans in attendance. Short-staffed. The funniest thing, the funniest thing, yes, I got a little bit of a haircut. The funniest thing that I saw today was all these websites saying that everything planned for NXT tonight is up in the air how many websites did you see that if you would have went on wwe's nxt twitter last night they plugged austin theory versus dexter loomis last night they plugged a few things that we were getting tonight last night they plugged la Knight's debut match nothing was thrown in 
awry. Again, clickbait, you know, I'm almost tempted to do it. Seriously. I think the closest that I get is something like this. Mr. McCon, Mr. McCon has arrived. If you're a regular, you know that I've been comparing Tony Khan's appearances in Impact Wrestling to Vince McMahon when he showed up on Memphis TV in 1993. Vince McMahon, the Mr. McMahon character, did not debut on WWE television until years later. But in 1993, when they were doing a little bit with Jerry the King Lawler in Memphis Wrestling, Vince McMahon was not, he was still just as far as fans would knew was a commentator for WWF. He showed up on Memphis TV as this huge heel and loved every goddamn minute of it. And I have been comparing Tony Khan's segments and impact to what Vince McMahon was doing in 93. Look, I'm not comparing Vince McMahon's wealth and success and the longevity of being in wrestling and saying that Tony Khan is on that level. You all have to start somewhere. But I enjoyed Tony Khan's appearances, even though they seem to not have amounted to much. You know, I've been saying it for over a year now. You need a GM in Impact uh, in AEW. You know, there has to be somebody making the matches and not just from a tweet or a news report. Tony Khan has announced this match. No, you need to have a character in some capacity. Now, I know they're still saying that, oh, no, 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 no. Tony Khan will only do that when it's absolutely necessary and he doesn't plan on doing on Dynamite. Yeah, right. You don't show up on Impact Wrestling TV week after week after week after week after week and playing this character and doing pictures in the Jacksonville Stadium or whatever with Tony Schiavone with the look in the sunglasses and this. You don't do all that just for the fuck of it. You're doing that because obviously his power would be needed on TV someday. Be ready, be prepared, learn, get experience. So I have no problem with it. The only problem I had tonight was which name do we use as the title? You know, the photo for our show tonight? Now, I'm curious, chat room. Should we use, right now on YouTube, the preview is Mr. McCon has arrived. But when I did that, I also thought of another name. I also thought of, wait, what the hell happened here? Oh, I know why, I know why. Ah, Dixie Carter has arrived. So my question to all of you is, should we go with Dixie Carter, spelled K-A-A-R-T-E-R, or do we go with Mr. McCann has arrived? Because for those that didn't see AEW's, what was it, Elevated, Elevation, Unfiltered, whatever the freaking name it is, um, you know, Big Show, Tony Schiavone, did some pretty good commentary. But Tony Khan came out and ordered that Kenny Omega is going to have a match with Matt Seidel this Wednesday, week from today on Dynamite. And just like the Joey Janela match, if Matt Seidel wins, he gets a future match, a future match against Kenny Omega for the heavyweight title. With all due respect, the way AEW has used Matt Seidel, honestly, does anybody give a drizzling shit that Matt Seidel might get a title shot against Kenny Omega in the future? Does anybody think that there is a chance whatsoever? Come on. Even if there, even if he won the match, even if somebody cost Kenny Omega to win, does anybody really care? I mean, I understand that AEW wants to reward a lot of people who work hard behind the scenes who are sort of, you know, ambassadors for AEW, even though they still wrestle. But, you know, there's a reason why some people should not be put in certain situations. I'm a big fan of Joey Janela. But the whole Joey Janela thing, it just felt just thrown out there. Matt Seidel, you know, because of elevation. I, I order you nine days from now or whatever he said. You know, I order you, Kenny, take on Kenny Omega. If, if you win, you get a future title shot. I don't care. I don't care. 
I just don't care. You know, I mean, Cody has a match with Penta today to open up Dynamite. And we had it was a fun match. It was awesome. I guess we could kind of like got in get into it now a little bit. And um, you know, fun way to open dynamite. I'll be honest with you, a lot of that extreme hatred and heat that was generated last week when Penta insulted Cody about his future kid and hurting his arm and breaking his arm and all that stuff, it felt like some of that was absent today penta obviously was being cocky and you know but you know when you see some of this too much of this chain wrestling and yes they weren't just doing that but you know i'm saying to myself just suspension of disbelief and storyline you know that should have been like a an absolute war pull apart and it, you know there was some moments there it just felt like ah. but you know at the end cody you know gets the win and once again once again, back is the incredible. No, once again, and shout out to anybody, they know why. I love that people picked up on the third base reference last the other day. Doesn't make me feel as old as I thought it was. But um, it continues again. And it continued today in two more matches. Is anybody picking up on that trend that I've noticed for a, like a month or two now? AEW, when it comes to certain people that are losing in matches, their interpretation is, I will just do an inside cradle. We'll just do a roll-up. A roll-up feels abrupt. And a roll-up, you know, could just be a matter of a quarter of a second and not kicking out in time. And they're going way too overboard with these inside cradle roll-up finishes because they want they think that protects the person that is losing they did it with the young bucks versus santana and ortiz which honestly i feel like farting right now like it, it, an inside fucking cradle they've done that a lot and they did it again tonight at least twice um so they did the inside cradle with you know with penta and after the match is over you know, you got the death triangle and you got all this shit going on. And, you know, I'm confused again. You know, Ray Phoenix, all right, you know, Pac, you know, Penta. I mean, Penta's acting like a heel, but, you know, who, what, where, what page are they? You know, like, what side are they on? Don't give me this tweener stuff because you have to have clear cut one way or the other. Um, Inside cradle to me is a bush move. You could do it once in a while, absolutely. But when you see it happening over and over and over again, and it's happening to a certain group of people there, you start to realize that their thinking is, oh, it's okay if these people lose. We'll just do the inside cradle. We won't make them knocked out from somebody's finisher. No, no, no. We're not going to let him lose to somebody's finisher. We'll just do the inside cradle instead. I freaking hate that. But Cody gets the beat down. Dustin makes the save. The natural nightmares, whatever. They, they come out to try to save Cody. And here comes who that? QT Marshall, like two minutes later. And he's standing on the apron. And they're like, like, where were you? And everything like that. And I'm saying to myself, I don't fucking care about this guy. Seriously, I have nothing against QT Marshall personally. But they have been putting this guy in like complex storylines. And at the end of the day, like, I don't know anyone out there that gives two shits about QT Marshall. Do I care if he turns on a natural nightmares? Do I care that he gets DDP's finishing move like the Godfather? I give you my DDT. He gets the girl. He loses the girl. He, the natural nightmares. He's with this person, Lee Johnson, Lee Travis, Travis. Nobody cares. There's nothing about QT Marshall that I honestly think anybody cares about, but because he is a very important element behind the scenes in AEW, which is 100% true, they feel the need to put this Matarats on TV in these con. Nobody cares that he didn't come out to save Cody. Shit. Nobody cares. Honestly, does anybody... Now, I know someone will say, I care, because they want me to shout them out. But seriously, come on. Does anybody really give a shit that QT Marshall comes out, comes in the back, comes in his pants? Come, nobody cares. 
I'm trying to make this show go an hour, hour and a half. That's why I'm extending this convo a little bit. But you know what? Before I go any further, a couple of quick shout outs. Uh, maybe this will generate a little interest. Stony Loney, he's stoned right now, by the way. So he had nothing to say. He just wanted to show some love for the show. You know, just trying to like improve the graphics a little bit. Thank you very much, my friend. I hope everything's well, you know, in the relationship department too. Dayok666, the doctor has earned his respect and he loves Reba. I've said this before. I think the problem with Reba, Rebel, is she doesn't get enough time in the ring. And believe me, you know, when you try to hone your craft and there are weeks, if not months, and it's not the same practicing in the ring beforehand, but you get those long spells of not doing something, you get rusty, you know, and her timing is off. I mean, you see it, you know, sometimes Thunder Rosa has to like bend her back like, okay, Reba hit me already. You know, you see that, but, um, you know, I, I can't, I really cannot criticize anything that she did tonight. She was fine tonight. Um, and again, you know, Britt Baker, whether, you know, the, 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 the gash that she got shouldn't have happened because she didn't protect herself well enough. You know, she still put on a phenomenal performance tonight and she continues to improve before our very eyes and give her credit for busting her ass trying to improve herself and give a lot of credit to Adam Cole also because Adam Cole, you know, I mean, he's obviously not my type of relationship partner, but Adam Cole, to have that person as your life partner, you know, and training you and helping you, my God, could you ask for anything better? So, like I said, Rip Baker tonight, even though she lost, she won. Bravo, bravo. Did a great job. Dexter Loomis looks like a member of a barbershop quartet on steroids. Oh, my God. I don't know if you ever saw the picture. I'll put it up tomorrow. I'm not going to search it out now. But I found pictures of me from 25 years ago when we first got our bird, the African gray that we have. And I have him posing. And I swear to God, and I know some people in the chat room have seen those pictures, and they will type right now saying, no, DT's not bullshitting. When you zoom in on the pictures, other than this big lump of hair, because that's what the look was in the mid-90s, if you look at my face, if you look at my eyes, and you look at my mustache, it looks like an Italian version of Dexter Loomis. Maybe Dexter Loomis is Italian. I have no idea. I don't care. But I, for this weird reason, my face looks exactly like Dexter Loomis. But um, he does look like somebody in a quartet. That match with Austin Theory kind of confused me today. I mean, to just have a straight-up match for most of the night after all of the emotions and all the teasing and everything else, you know, it, that was a little bit off to me. I mean, you would have thought that Austin Theory, especially whether he was traumatized, whether it was, you know, he was infatuated, whether he, you know, this remember the therapy thing, that whole storyline now is stupid because how does Austin Theory by now in storyline not know that there was a vignette on TV where Johnny Gargano paid off theory. You see where it's going to go. They they have to try to make this make sense. If Austin Theory ends up turning on Gargano, he did going to show the footage of Gargano paying off the doctor, and Austin Theory is going to be, you know, <laughs> I, it was you all along, you know, and that might be the split. So, but... um Dexter Loomis is still my favorite in NXT, but uh, Karrion Cross is starting to catch up a little bit. You know, his arms, I'm telling you, his arms are freaking jacked, man. He's going nuts in the... In the if a, a crazy Cruiserweight says, if AEW loses the ratings this week, the excuse will be the 18-34 to 34 demographic out celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Crazy Cruiserweight, I will tell you right now, there ain't no way AEW is losing the ratings this week. Um, they came close last week, NXT, but uh, not close enough. And honestly, honestly, you've heard me say for 78 weeks now that one of NXT's problems is sometimes they are too organized. 
they knew, they knew that they were going to go up with their main event. They were going to go up against Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker, which was recorded last week. I don't know if people know that. It was recorded last week. And all of the reports from fans who were there in attendance that spoke up about it online said they tore the house down. A lot of what you saw tonight, the thumbtacks, the chairs, the ladders, it, people were writing on it on message boards all week. I try to stay away from them because I like to be surprised once in a while. And, you know, so NXT knew pretty much knew they had a good idea as far as what they were going up against tonight and yes you know you don't divert from your plans but like i said not for nothing you go back and you look at that main event right before they go to the commercial break and you got finn balor standing next to carrying cross and they're just like casual conversation while, you know, one, I don't know if it was Lorcan or Birch who was on, in the ring, and they just have the camera on those two guys. And I'm just looking at the TV, and I'm like, you know, this this is awful. That is awful. You see energy, anger, you just, and on this side, hey, you know, you, know, you want to go to the gym tomorrow? You know, we, we were in the main event. We were going to tear it up. You know, and then just like hanging out, like discussing like, you know, what did you have for dinner tonight? Hey, um, how's everybody at home? Not acceptable. Not acceptable. When you have two things on TV at the same time, not acceptable. So Ted Turner, shout out. Loyal listener and viewer. Keep tremendous job. Look, as, soon as, as long as you keep tuning in, as long as everybody likes the shows here, I will keep doing what I'm doing. Much love. I do this all for you and for me, you know. And by the way, if you don't mind, I'm sorry for doing this. But if you're enjoying the show, I would appreciate it if you give this episode a like. The more you do it, the more you send the message to YouTube that you like my content. And they'll recommend it to others. And uh, I thank you. I thank you. So, so Cody beats Penta. QT comes out, nobody cares. Young Bucks interviewed by Alex Marvez. And um, even though Ray Phoenix has beaten both of them one-on-one -on -one in singles matches, they still feel they're a better team than Ray, uh, Ray Phoenix and Pac. So uh, I think that match is going to be coming way before the pay-per-view. And uh, Don Callis has a little confrontation with the Young Bucks today. And Don Callis basically calls Kenny Omega God. And Don Callis says that you are not the Young Bucks from New Japan. That here you're you're kind of like you know, uh, uh, basically saying you're a shell of what you used to be. He wants to see that fire. He wants to see the anger. He wants to see the Young Bucks that he saw in New Japan. And he says to both of them, you know, at night. Do you look at yourselves and think you see the Young Bucks from New Japan? So I like the segment. The problem is, where is it going to go from here? Are the Young Bucks going to eventually turn heel? But they did this not too long ago. And then they, they're like, doesn't this kind of feel like the inner circle stuff? Like just recycled like, where are they? they what, a month ago, they're doing this. And two weeks ago, they're not doing this. And tonight, they're like, nah. I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, Papo Jr., man. Much love, my brother. Seriously. You didn't have to do that, my brother. I will take care of you, my friend. Um, and I feel even more guilty now. Because, uh, you know, some of you out there have been struck with COVID. Some of you out there are currently battling COVID. AV7607 is one of them. She's battling it. She's feeling better. Um, and Papo emailed me earlier today and shared with me like a cocktail. And I don't have it in front of me i was going to bring it up tomorrow during the show but it's like a combination of like turmeric and like pepper and celery there's like a whole bunch of vegetables but 
I know exactly what he's talking about. Turmeric is like the number one ingredient because turmeric is great for inflammation. And that's obviously one of the biggest issues when you get COVID. So tomorrow, I'm going to share his um, his cocktail. And I got news for you. Some of those ingredients I already have, I might even make the cocktail just to drink it. Because one of the biggest battles that I deal with every day is inflammation. But Papa, much love to you, man. And uh, he loved the AEW main event tonight. He said the women killed it. Britt Baker should be champion by the end of 2021. I tell you, I tell you, not for nothing, man. And let's keep it real. But let's also keep it real. I know what you're saying right now. Like, what is he talking about? Let's keep it real. Britt Baker is no Hikaru Shida. But let's keep it real. AEW has treated Hikaru Shida's championship run in 2021 like garbage. I mean, I'm liking the change with FTR. MJF's group now is called the Pinnacle. And by the way, by the way, talk about forward thinking. Check that out on the screen. For my audio-only friends out there, and I kind of feel bad because sometimes when I'm here doing video, I forget that 75 to 80% of everybody who tunes in still only accesses audio-only. But back in July of 2020, All Elite Wrestling posted a tweet, and basically MJF had cut a promo, and All Elite Wrestling said MJF didn't cross his words when he was talking about him and the future of AEW. And Dax had re- you know, responded to the tweet. This was July of 2020. And he said, I don't mind this at all. Everyone in the back, stop happily gland-handing. Let's reach the pinnacle of this business. So... Did they have the thoughts of having a new faction, calling it the pinnacle in July of 2020? I have no idea. I have no idea whatsoever. But they are calling it the pinnacle now. And I got news for you. You know, maybe after Dax made that tweet, maybe somebody there said, you know, that kind of would be a great name of a faction. So do I think they were planning this since July of last year? I don't know about that. Um, but you know, got to give him credit, got to give him credit. So, uh, but you know, getting back to AEW, I mean, you know, we touched on it last week and did you notice last week, all of those people that love to post wrestle crap, didn't 99% of them didn't have the balls to show this segment with, Maki Ito with the microphone going like this to Kawashita. I had no problem with Maki Ito's side, but Hakarashita is like. Vicky Guerrero has a Singapore cane wedged in Hakarashita's throat. And I didn't even notice this last week. I, after people brought up my attention, I watched it again. And Vicky Guerrero, you know, because the Singapore cane had a lot of sweat on it, she lost her grip for a second. And when she lost her grip, you see Akara Shida shoving the cane in her own throat. It was, oh man. AEW is doing a shit job with Akara Shida in 2021 so even though Hikaru Shida can still put rings around Dr. Britt Baker Dr. Britt Baker is putting up a good argument that she should be the AEW women's champion so uh yeah Mr. Mike the guitar shot that Miz did to Bad Bunny was pretty lame that was kind of weak but, you know, I mean, look at Miz's whole career. I mean, you know, the guy is not notorious for doing, you know, if you're trying to say to me, well, give Maki Ito a pass because you don't justify bad behavior with other bad behavior. You don't, ju- you don't justify somebody doing shit because someone else does shit. No one should be doing anything shit. 
So I don't think extreme. I don't think Sheeta is overrated. You look at some of the matches she's had in Japan. She is phenomenal. She's phenomenal. Is she better than Asuka? No, I wouldn't say that. Is she better than Io Shirai? I don't think I would say that either. But Hikaru Shida is definitely deserving of being a women's champion. But look at Darby Allen tonight. Look at Darby Allen tonight. And for anybody that's new here, understand I don't do things in order for the most of the time. We have a conversation. It leads into other parts of the night. That's where we go with this show. I think that works out better. You know, if you want an organized breakdown, go check out another show. But you getting back to what I was saying. Um, and Papo, thank you again, my friend. Thank you. Um, I want you to email me a shipping address. I want to send you like a whole bunch of DT breakfast soup, you know, bobblehead and some other little goodies. I can't take that without giving you something in return. God, I'll even give you one of my signed photos, you know, personally write it to you. But thank you again, my brother, seriously. And tomorrow, like I said, I will definitely give everybody that concoction. And trust me, even if you don't get COVID, it sounds like a great drink to have for inflammation, seriously. Um, Ted Turner, I loved Bull Nakano. I loved Bull Nakano's work. You know, she wasn't extremely polished all the time, but she had great matches in the mid '90s. Um, Bull Nakano is it was excellent. Medusa was freaking phenomenal. You know, they they, they had some awesome matches too. So, um, you know, I just feel that AEW is doing an injustice by how they're using Hikaru Shida in 2021, and now I, this leads to Darby Allen. Darby Allen tonight. I don't know if anybody in AEW management listens to these shows or watches these shows. I know there's a few individuals there that have emailed me once in a while just to, you know, express support and everything. But don't mention my name because I don't want to, you know, and I agree with that. Um, but I've been saying repeatedly that Darby Allen's reign as TNT champion has been kind of a joke. He only, up until that match with Scorpio Sky, he only defended it twice in like four months. It's been a fucking joke. And speaking of joke, this joke with Sting continues. Are you kidding me? Uh, is, is this the equivalent of Lana being put through a table? They advertised again today. Sting speaks. He speaks. And if I had a million dollars for every word that Sting said tonight, I would still have zilch. He speaks. He said gots tonight. How many times has AEW done that shit? Sting talks. Sting speaks. Sting calls this person out. Darby Allen, we, could, we finally have gone away from Team Taz just to have Taz come out. And talk about random bullshit two weeks in a row. Remember last week when I complained Lance Archer has been on fucking momentum. Leave him alone. If it's not broken, don't try to fix it. They forced the heel turn last week. For no apparent reason, Lance Archer comes out and kind of like threatens Sting. And I, and I, and again, I'll bring it up. It reminded me of that time when Braun Strowman was feuding with Roman Reigns and WWE wanted Braun Strowman as the heel, but everybody was getting behind Braun Strowman because they didn't like Roman Reigns being forced down everybody's throats and the fans were popping for Braun Strowman. And instead of letting it organically build and getting the interest, they forced Braun Strowman to come out one night on the microphone just to say, just like all of you, ah, I hate Roman Reigns. And it was just so goddamn random and stupid, and it was so forced, and that was WWE's way of basically saying, fuck you, fans. We're going to go in this direction anyway. That's what it felt like last week. Instead of just letting Lance Archer do what he's been doing, it's like this forced interruption of Sting. So tonight they do it with Brian Cage. Now teasing that Brian Cage may leave Team Taz. Oh, no, no, no. I wanted... 
to call you a legend, Sting, all this time. Oh, yeah, the power bomb from hell that everybody thought he had diapers taped to his back for cushion, a pillow, a my pillow. Oh, no, it's not a my pillow because he supports Trump. A blankie. Sting had an AEW blankie underneath his. So to cushion the fall. What are you people smoking? Not you, but now tonight, Brian Cage, does it. Now, what's going to happen? We going to get more of these goofy storylines in two weeks from now? Oh, it was just a setup. It was just a setup. Come on, man. This is horrible, horrible booking of Cage like Ted Turner is saying right now. And it's horrible booking of Lance Archer. They can't come up with a logical, entertaining way to go from point A to point B. So we'll just make Lance Archer feel like, and I'm sorry for saying this, I hope I don't upset anybody out there. The only reason why I'm saying it is because my fiance has hers right now. And my fiance is notorious of being an absolute bitch when it's her time in a month. Bitch, bitch with a capital B, bitch. It's almost like, oh, um, how do we get like Lance Archer to possibly go against Darby Allen? Well, we can have him win the King, the King of the Facer Revolution ladder match. No, 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 no. We'll do that with Scorpio Sky. Um, yeah, but we want Lance. All right, we'll just have him call out Sting. You know, just like it feels like he got his period last week. Lance, it looked like Lance Archer got his period. Yeah, I'm in a bitchy mood, so let's just call out Sting. Now, all of a sudden, Jake the Snake Roberts is being big dick number one. And then Brian Cage, it's like the opposite. Like he's had his period that he just had it for like two months. Now, all of a sudden, love and respect and this is and that. God, that is horrible. That is lame. That is horrible. This is pretty freaking pathetic, man. And you, you see the pattern. They don't know what the fuck to do with these big men. And I've been saying that for about six, seven months now. Ever since when Cody was parking his car, his limo, whatever it was outside, and they did the parking lot segment, and Cody said that we're, we're like a light heavyweight promotion. You basically just told all your heavyweights, that's basically what they did. So yeah, we'll just make them all over the place. If I see it, and you see it, a lot of other fans out there see it. It's nice to see Sting. It's nice to see Christian. I'm not knocking on the Christian stuff at all. They haven't done anything yet to give me a reason to knock it. Christian cut a promo today in the back. I loved that they did it in the back. It was like a pre-recorded segment. Instead of doing this, you know, by the ring and everything, in confrontation, he speak. Remember last week, Christian speaks. No, he didn't. Sting speaks. No, he didn't. So tonight, you know, it's almost like Cry Wolf. Christian speaks. This time he did. Christian cuts a promo with Dasha Fuentes. And maybe I'm nitpicking here. I understand Christian is a Hall of Famer. Jesus Christ, you know. Go look at the old episodes. Up until, that's what makes me laugh about this. Up until three weeks ago, I had a sign behind me that said Christian for Hall of Fame. Up until three weeks ago. Once I realized that he wasn't going in the Hall of Fame this year for WWE, I said, all right, I'm not going to keep it up for another year. I took it down. I put the Karrion Cross picture in its place and behind me. So what happens? The week after I take the picture down, Christian debuts in AEW. Go figure. But Christian cuts his promo today, makes it clear that he wants to cement his legacy. That's why he's in AEW. And he said he might have ruffled some feathers coming in here, but he makes it clear he wants the AEW Heavyweight Championship. But he also told everyone out there, rest easy, that, you know, I want to get some wins, I want to earn it, and my goal is to outwork everyone. Simple, simple. Not overly thought. You know, say what you want about Christian coming into AEW at this age. Until he gives me any, uh, until he gives me a reason to knock it, I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking it. 
You know, the one thing I keep thinking to myself, when I see people on social media, especially Twitter, knocking this, knocking that, knocking this, knocking Miro, knocking this, I say to myself, you know what? Whether somebody's being used good or not, I look at Miro, I look at Lana, I look at Zoe Stark, I look at Christian, I look at Britt Baker, I look at Jade Cargill, I look at every single, I look at QT Marshall, who that, I look at every single person that is involved in these promotions and they have one thing in common that is that differs from everybody online. No, not that they're on TV and these people aren't. It's that nobody on social media, on Twitter, that every week bitches and complains. No one has ever like jumped from Twitter and made a career out of it. You know, like, it's like Vegas. Whatever you, Whatever's on Twitter stays on Twitter. Unfortunately, Twitter doesn't put money in your pocket. Twitter isn't getting you a job. Twitter isn't getting you a career. Like, nobody has gotten a career out of this from tweeting negativity. So, someone is working, whether the shirt is goofy or not, and Christian says, look, I'm going to outwork everyone, and everybody online is out of work everyone, Whose side am I going to take? Q-tip Marshall. <laughs> Q-tip Marshall. Trust me, ear. I'd rather look at earwax. I'd rather look at my earwax than look at QT Marshall. So, um, so Darby Allen tonight actually says his title reign so far has been a joke. Now suddenly he wants to defend it every week. And he wants to pay tribute to the greatest TNT champion of all time, which is Brody Lee. And he offers a challenge to any member of the Dark Order. Now, that's nice and everything, but don't we have this storyline right now that Matt Hardy is like creating this giant army to destroy the Dark Order? In storyline, why wouldn't Matt Hardy want to try to recruit Darby Allen? You know, why wouldn't Matt Hardy get involved in this? He's just going to let John Silver take on Darby Allen next week for the title? I mean, I like John Silver, very friendly guy online, very sociable and everything like that. You know, but again, talk about random. Now all of a sudden, Darby Allen wants to defend it every week. Doesn't it just feel like just out of nowhere? And I brought it up last week. You know, you have Matt Hardy for two weeks. I'm setting up this army to destroy the Dark Order. And they don't face the Dark Order today. Instead, we get Bear Country teaming up with Jurassic Express, which was god-awful, and they lose to Matt Hardy, Private Party, The Butcher, and The Blade. Match wasn't bad. The reason why I say it was awful was not necessarily in the match work, but the whole storyline from beginning to end was that Bear Country was not getting along with Jurassic Express. It was so freaking forced. And I've said before... These guys, Bear Bronson, Bear Boulder, they could be stars of tomorrow. But they're not stars yet. And not just because they haven't been on TV. You look at what I looked at today, and then you realize there's a reason why they should be left on dark or elevation. You know, okay, they had a nice showing in the Battle Royal. Oh, let's now put them on dynamite on a match. You know... Sometimes when you bet in the stock market, you might gamble on a penny stock. You know, this company, Johnson & Johnson, they might do a vaccine. Let me put some money there. And you hit. Oh, you know, there's a lot of people in pain right now. and some medical marijuana. And that hits. You know, and then you get a little greedy and you start like, you know, I think this, you know, uh, I don't know, shit-flavored pork rinds. I think it actually could connect or sweat smelling. And you just, no, you gamble too many times. AEW gambled by throwing the fucking bears on dynamite and this forced friction between them and Jurassic Express. Now what is it going to lead to? Jurassic Express versus Bear Country? Why? Why? For what? Look at all the fucking people that they have. And this is what... So that match was a joke. That match was a joke. Private Party hitting the gin and juice. Matt Hardy tags himself in. He pins Marco Stunt and... That's that's all we got. Again, created this army, not taking out the Dark Order. The Dark Order 
Matt Hardy and his group better get involved next week in that match between John Silver and Darby Allen. And not until after Darby Allen pins John Silver either. So, um, Moxley and Eddie Kingston cutting a promo, you know, making fun of the Good Brothers. I like Eddie Kingston and uh, John Moxley together as a team. You know, they're making fun of uh, Talk Shop of Mania, which was funny. Um, Lyon says he's seen QT Marshall at the Toronto show. I, I Look, I've seen QT Marshall wrestle in Ring of Honor. QT Marshall is talented. The problem is they treat him on Dynamite like he's got some like legacy career. Like the, maybe there's, you know, TNA, the amnesia years that maybe he was a huge star in TNA and we're just like forgetting right now, you know? Or there was, you know, NXT, the the uh, the hidden years. Like this, this guy has had nothing that... You know, and they're treating him like he's like this long star. That he's talented, he's got wrestling ability, but you look at the storylines they put him in. They put him in the natural nightmares. They give him a girlfriend. They give him DDP's move. He's diamond cutting everybody. Diamond cut my dick. I'm sorry for being nasty like that, but I get angry. I, it's like, well, stop insulting my intelligence. I know he is a huge part of backstage, you know, but like he's standing, it, it's it's almost like Angie. It's all, He's like Angie. And I have respect for Angie because, you know, I hear that she's a wonderful mother to her kids and Ray Mysterio's wife, and there's nothing negative about whatsoever. But she's standing in the ring, and I'm saying to myself, for what? For what? And then they're playing piñata, piñata that time. What is, what, that's what it feels like. You do so much for us, you know. Go out there, you know, have some fun. Remember that crazy hardcore match they had, which was halfway decent? But as I'm watching, I'm like, why do I care that QT Marshall is diving off a ladder, busted open hard way? I think people bring up QT Marshall to piss me off sometimes on this show, seriously. I think they figured out that um, two names with the initials KC is like blocked from over here because I just don't want to hear it no more with all due respect. So that's the new, like, okay, since we can't bring up those names, we'll bring up QT Marshall instead. So I'm joking around, obviously, joking around. Now people are going to try to type the names and it's going to say, no, doesn't work. <laughs> so um anyway good brothers they have a match with eddie kingston and moxley good brothers lose they lost the tag titles to finn juice i don't know i don't know man it, it was a fun match good brothers attack them early on they hit the magic killer on moxley which kind of knocks moxley out for a while but he ultimately gets back into the match and it was it was a fun back and forth um but once again that freaking inside cradle inside cradle there will never be a dtqt show there will never be a dtqt show never Somebody, you could super chat me a million dollars. There will never be. He could super chat me a million dollars. There will never be a DTQ QT show. Um, but again, the inside cradle. You see what I'm talking about? You notice it. I don't think anybody else has noticed that. That's their safe way of having the larger names lose matches. And they think by doing a cradle or roll up, which is pretty much the same thing, that they don't lose any credibility. We, they can't take the finishers. Can't take Moxley's paradigm shift. No way. You know, Santana Ortiz can't take the Meltzer driver. Uh, crazy. You know, no, no, no. We, we'll just inside cradle. I swear to God, I, I almost want to ban the inside cradles instead of the leg slaps. And yes, I slap my tummy because... I can't slap my leg all the way down there. You can't see it. Yeah, Sam, still, the Rich Swan. And then, look, the stuff with Rich Swan is not his fault. It's AEW and Impact Wrestling's fault. They're actually going to do Schwan versus Omega, title versus title, which you and I have talked about for two-plus months now. 
It's no surprise. I don't know why people are surprised now. But in storyline, Rich Swan never shows up on Dynamite once to try to get a Kenny Omega. We could do it a week before TNA uh, Impact Wrestling's pay-per-view. That's it. You never get a second chance at a first impression. And that Impact storyline, you ever see that fun memmy? I think I finally pronounced it right. You ever see that fun memmy where there's a guy with his girl and there's a woman walking by and I have to do it this way so you see his face and he'd be like this? And she's looking, you know that memmy I'm talking about. That's kind of like what's going on right now. The girl walking by is now like New Japan. Look at Kenta. Oh, my God. They broke the... Remember Tony Khan's tweet that night? They broke down the forbidden door. Kenta, the forbidden door has been broken down. I said it Monday. And I said it yesterday on Patreon. That forbidden door is like the scene from The Naked Gun. Remember when O.J. Simpson at the very beginning of the Naked Gun, where all of the terrorists and everybody, oh, are we great? we're going to destroy America. Or no, it was the drug bust or something like that. And he kicks the door down and his foot goes through the door and he's trying to get his foot out. And while he's doing it, everybody's loading their guns. Police squad! That's what Tony Khan, with all due respect. Now remember, when I posted this, I actually like it. I like it. Him being the GM role makes complete sense. I like it. I want to see him get better. I want to see him get better. But that forbidden door tweet stuff, and now look at Kenta on AEW TV a month later. Look at Rich Swan. Never showed up once. His kicking down the door, he's got his foot in the door right now. And you know what? Too bad of all of the, a lot of these other promotions you know, want to get a little rub off of AEW, you know, oh, we could get a nice rub, you know, maybe we can like do a little bit with them. Everybody wants the rub from AEW. They can't get it from WWE. No matter how many times Triple H says, we're willing uh, to work with anybody uh, if the, the settings is right uh, and if it makes a sense. Uh, blah, 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 blah. They can't go to WWE. So there's no promotions out there that want to say, you know what? Fuck WWE. Fuck AEW. Let's do our own thing. Let's create our own forbidden door and kick it down. There's nobody out there doing that. And that sucks. That sucks. So you get the inside cradle once again. After the match is over, the beat down to Moxley and Kingston goes on. Kenny Omega comes out. They're using the chair. They put... Kingston's leg in the chair. Wow, we've been going over an hour already. We got a or an app to start speeding this up a little bit. But um, Omega and Good Brothers, you know, they beat down Eddie Kingston, put his leg in a chair, smash it. So he's selling it outside the ring. I liked at the very end. He's trying to tell the referee, you know, help me in the ring. He wanted to go into the ring with Omega, and you have the doctor saying, no, 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 you're injured. I like that. I like little subtle things like that. But they go to do it to Omega, but put his, uh, they put, um, excuse me, Moxley, and they put the chair around Moxley's neck. And now all of a sudden, you know, the young bucks come to save the day. What are you doing? You're going to kill him. What are you going to kill him? That's where um, you start having holes with this. You know, tough boy, tough man. With Kenny Omega and Matt Seidel. Nine days. Nine days. I've had it with your stuff. Nine days. But is nowhere to be found when Kenny Omega is about to break John Moxley's neck. A little consistency, please. Yeah, but that was elevation. So good brothers don't do what they were going to do. Moxley ends up regaining his composure. Starts, you know recklessly threatening to throw the chair around good brothers omega leave the ring and the young bucks are just looking at moxley and that's basically how the segment ends and yeah papa well papa buck is still recuperating from his injuries we already talked about the sting darby allen interview sting speaks tonight yeah i don't think so see he he he, he spoke a lot by saying nothing 
you know how people that will say something like that. Um, what else did we get tonight? Uh, Scorpio Sky basically saying nice guys finish last, so he's not going to be a nice guy anymore. Okay, I'm fine. I'm willing to go with it if it's going to get Scorpio Sky a little more exposure. But I don't understand. Lance Archer was doing great as kind of like a baby face that's not really a baby face. So we're going to just do role reversal. We're going to tease Brian Cage as a baby face now, and we'll make Lance Archer the asshole. Why? There was nothing wrong with Brian Cage. There was nothing wrong with Lance Archer. So now they're doing role reversal. I'm confused with that one. Totally confused. So another segment... Mirdo backstage uh, working out. He's in interrupted by Alex Marvez. And um, he asks Mirdo if he accepts the challenge from uh, Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy. He's like, why? He's like, you know, I already beat them. I mean, it did say so Kip Sabian shows up. They're teasing a little friction between Kip Sabian and Mirdo. You could see the beginning of the end is coming. I have nothing against Kip Sabian personally. But him and Chuck Taylor, if they just got stranded on a desert island with Gilligan and the skipper and Marianne and the professor, and, you know, I would be perfectly fine with that. You know, there's like no fire whatsoever. Mirdo's like, I don't want to face him again. And Kip's like, walks into the picture. Why not? Why not? You know, my, my wife is still like injured from last week. And Mirdo basically tells him, he's like, biggest mistake of your career is bringing your wife at ringside. And Mirdo says that it's his destiny to be world champion. And he only cares about his destiny. When he's in the ring, he doesn't care about anybody. He doesn't even care about Kip Sabian. His destiny is to be world champion. And it looks so ridiculously stupid. Kip is like, yeah, me too. Me too. And I immediately thought of all these goofs on social media that and you notice that trend. You post like some good news about yourself and some people will notice the attention you get and they'll wait like a day or two and they'll post like a hybrid version of what you said a couple of days earlier. So it's like, no, me too. No, no, no. I need the attention also. It just was stupid. So Miro walks away and Kip Sabian accepts the match without Miro knowing. So next week we have Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor versus Miro and Kip Sabian. Obviously expect a, some type of faux pas to happen. Taylor and Cassidy will probably win. And then maybe we'll see that split coming sooner than later. Nyla Rose versus Ty Conti next week. FTR and Sean Spears versus the Varsity Blondes and Dante Martin. Darby Allen versus John Silver for the TNT title. Kenny Omega versus Matt Seidel. If Matt Seidel wins, he gets a future title shot. Honestly, I'm not looking forward to any of it. Darby Allen versus John Silver will be fun. But the way AEW's used the Varsity Blondes, the Varsity Blondes will get a little bit of offense, but in the end, FTR and Sean Spears are going to beat the Bulls off of that team. Um, next week's card does not look anywhere near the level of this week. Um, now, the, as I said earlier, MJF's group now is called the Pinnacle. I like it. They showed them coming off a private plane Looked a lot like the Four Horsemen. Tully Blanchard cutting a promo without necessarily bringing up the Four Horsemen, but basically he's been to the mountaintop and, you know, he just puts over the group of talents that he's with now. And then MJF cuts his promo and he just goes one by one, you know, bringing up Sean Spears, FTR. I think he said they were Grand Slam champions, kind of compared Sean Spears to Arn Anderson. I know, I know what you're going to say. But... They look the role. I like it. It's going to spark some new feuds. And, you know, as bad as the Inner Circle storylines have been for a few months, this is something that I actually could could get behind. Absolutely could get behind. Um, Inner Circle obviously had the week off. Um, <laughs> by the way, you know, some of your Super Chats talking about NXT, I'll play them when we get to NXT and don't give pop, pop all the merchandise I can't sell. Anthony, I know, I know what I do for pop. Papa does a lot for me. I want to do something for him. So it's all good. 
And I know he's saying that joking around. Anthony Diaz is is uh, quite the comedian sometimes. And I say that to compliment. So let's see where it goes. It seems like they're focusing on MJF versus Chris Jericho, which I'm fine with. But I think a lot of you out there probably wanted MJF versus Sammy Guevara a little bit more. And I hope, like, when you look, when you dissect everything, you kind of feel like FTR and Santana Ortiz are going to go out a little bit. Hager and Wardlow, I don't know. They don't seem like they fight in the ring as much as you would want them to, so I don't know what's going to happen there. MJF and Jericho seems like it. So what does that leave, technically? Sean Spears and Sammy Guevara. I don't know if I really want to see that all that much. I don't know if I want to see that all that much, you know? And I certainly don't want to see another tag team come out of this. So, uh, you know, we I don't want to see less sex gods versus MJF and Sean Spears. And don't be surprised if that happens. So, But um, the main event, I opened up talking about it. Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker knocked it out of the fucking park. It was an unsanctioned lights out match. I get it. You know, I, I have brought it up before. When you have unsanctioned matches, you know, should a referee be really in there? Obviously, it's needed. It's got to direct the story somehow. You have the commentators doing commentary. So there was really, you know, was it unsanctioned? Did it feel like that compared to years past? Maybe not. I don't know why they just didn't do like a false count anywhere. No DQ, anything goes. But... Who cares? You know what I mean? They just tore it up. Chairs, tables, ladders, you know, even there was two spots that got me a little nervous. And one of them was Thunder Rosa that was kind of like she picked up Britt Baker from the top rope and like dropped her almost like a uh, a little bit of a powerbomb into the ladder. Uh, The thumbtack spot was really, really stiff. Um, Obviously, Britt Baker kicking out at two, which some people I saw online were kind of complaining about that. But the people live were like, this is awesome. So it it was fine. I like towards the end where Britt Baker was going to put the mandible claw on Thunder Rosa and Thunder Rosa pushes her back into the thumbtacks. I went through tons of thumbtacks on a table. And you've seen the pictures of them in my head, in my hands, in my face, in my wrist, in my neck. And it's not fun. But that adrenaline rush is so good. I'm telling you, as weird as this sounds, something tells me that they loved every minute of what they were doing in that match tonight. As weird as that sounds, as much as some of that shit hurt, as much as, you know, the the getting busted open looked kind of brutal, something tells me that they truly loved every minute of that match. And it was awesome. It was awesome. Um, you know, Reba got involved a little bit. She ended up going through a table. Um, but in the end, you know, anybody have memories of Rhino? You know, when Thunder Rosa pretty much like pile drove Britt Baker through the table out to the outside of the floor. It reminded me of when Rhino pile drove Sandman's wife through the table to the floor. Because ECW used to put it as part of their intro back in, I think, 2000, I think it was. But the match was freaking crazy. And I was thinking to myself, can you, because obviously, look, the match was recorded last week. So Adam Cole already knew what happened. But if he happened to have been able to see it live, could you imagine? He's probably doing the reverse of Britt Baker. Remember when Britt Baker was in the crowd? I would have no problem if Adam Cole had that reaction too. I hope Adam Cole, I know this is going to sound kind of goofy, but I hope he tweets some praise for her tonight. Even though the match was recorded last week, and I know, you know, he's a professional when it comes to WWE, and he's not going to try to, like, put any tweets out there that's going to cause controversy with AEW stuff and everything. But I, I hope that he can tweet something about Britt Baker tonight. So, VJ says AEW reminded him of 99 WCW. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't have any issue with that. I like to see Adam Cole's comments. Some tells me it may be similar to um, Renee Young's, Renee Paquette's comments when she sees John Moxley doing some of the things that he does. So, uh, overall, not a bad show of dynamite at all today. There was a couple of things that I really did not like at all, but that main event is going to be one we're going to remember for a very long time. Um, I'm going to look. Does it deserve five stars? No. I'm going to be curious to see what Dave Meltzer rates it. Personally, I would give it four and a quarter, maybe four and a half. But um, we all know, and like I said, I have no problem with his bias. You know, I understand what he likes and what, you know, breads his butter. If you don't like that, don't follow him. That's, that's how I look at it. You know, that goes for anything. But decent show, decent show. Now we go to NXT, and I'm just rolling back my notes a little bit. By the way, next week, Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart are going to take on Jesse, Camilla, and Aaliyah. Not for nothing, um, I that doesn't excite me at all. I don't mean physically, but to me, that's like, you know, you look at the entire women's division, and you that's one of the first things you hype for next week. Are you intentionally trying to get yourself a 610,000 rating viewership, viewership rating? That does not, you know, unless, unless some tag team shows up and tries to get involved, just not, does not feel that way. Yes, Renee was talking about her becoming an American citizen last week. Very happy for her. That's, you know, that's, that's a very important thing. You know, way Barrett recently was. A few people recently have. By the way, did anybody catch a little comment that Wade Barrett said about uh, L.A. Knight tonight? Did anybody take notice of that? When L.A. Knight came out for his match, by the way, talk about how um, the, like, stock has fallen on some of these talents. Remember August Gray? I mean, think about that. Remember August Gray? What the fuck happened to August Gray? Uh, who was the other guy? Um, oh, shit. What was... Uh, uh, who was rough? Or, no, Rust. Tyler Rust. Look at what happened to these people. You see how quick some people's stock has fallen? But did anybody take note of a little comment that Wade Barrett said? No, I don't think anybody online... And nobody in the chat room noticed. When LA Knight came out for his match, he talked talked about how he crossed paths with LA Knight on the independent wrestling scene. And to me, I was like, I thought of NWA immediately. And I'm like, oh, happy birthday, Billy. Happy birthday, Billy. I understand why Wade Barrett has to say that, but when I heard him say that, I was like, okay. I'm sure Billy Corrigan does not consider NWA an independent wrestling group. So, But LA Knight beats Kurt Stallion like this. Bronson Reed, I guess they're trying to set up a match between the two. This time around, Bronson Reed puts on LA Knight's jacket it doesn't fit obviously and he ends up tearing the arms off and everything and you know for a second we thought that Kurt Stein was going to get a roll up victory but didn't happen LA Knight gets the win now two weeks in a row see that's why I love breaking down quarter hour ratings we took note the Cameron Grimes stuff was not bringing it home in the ratings department all three of his segments with the basketball dropped in numbers. This is two weeks in a row now. No Cameron Grimes. Now, hey, maybe there's, it's health related. I don't want to go further than that. But two weeks in a row, take notice. You know, some of that momentum but Cameron Grimes seems to have gone down. If Cameron Grimes doesn't have, I'll say it right out. Cameron Grimes doesn't have COVID or is not in quarantine. There is no reason why Cameron Grimes 
didn't come out there today to either help L.A. Knight win or try to do something to Bronson Reed for wearing L.A. Knight's jacket. Remember L.A. Knight outside at the ring when Cameron Grimes was in his match? Just saying. Just saying. Um, very beginning of NXT tonight, Finn Balor is out there. Karrion Cross comes out there. And uh, basically, Finn Balor, um, they, they, they announced Finn Balor is going to take on Karrion Cross for the NXT title at TakeOver. And I guess Karrion Cross, his finisher is no longer that shot to the back of the neck because tonight Karrion Cross said at TakeOver, I'm going to choke you out. And Finn Balor says, you're going to main event TakeOver and you're going to choke. Okay, you know. Obviously, scripted words given to them. Uh, not too bad. Then we get, you know, like that telephone call when you're in the middle of sex. If it's not the grizzled young veterans, it's only Lorcan and Danny Birch. They are nothing, for, to me, they are nothing without Pete Dunne and Pat McAfee. They just, they don't click with me. Then. Again, WWE is very strong on the entertainment value, and they have these belts, and it just doesn't connect with me at all. They come out there, and they're saying that the only person Finn Balor should be facing a takeover is Pete Dunne, even though they just had a title match at a takeover, if I recall. And um, then we get Scarlett basically... Uh, testing their manhood. And what I mean by that is Scarlett is outside the ring and she's telling Oni Larkin and Danny Birch that, you know, um, you're no cowards. I mean, you should defend those titles tonight against Finn Balor and Karrion Cross. And, you know, she's right next to him. He's like, you wouldn't back down to that. You're not a coward, are you? So their manlyhood, you know, just like I said, if you really want to test some of the people on social media, question their manlyhood. It'll be the equivalent of that movie. What's that movie where they, they killed the guy's dog and he just like decides to go revenge on everyone? Look, if somebody did that to my dog, I'd do the same thing. But the social media equivalent of that is testing somebody's manhood. Well, John Wick, yes. Yes, that's what it is. You want to have some John Wick on social media? You know, make fun of somebody's manlyhood, you know? I don't condone making fun of people, but if somebody really wants to be an asshole towards you, play chess. Go checkmate. Do a John Wick on them with their, you know, with their own issues and see how they react. Oh, my God, it'll be a John Wick. They will not stop talking about you for a month. But um, so Scarlett, you know, is basically getting only Larkin and Danny Burch to agree to a tag title match. And tonight reminded me of Adam Pierce, card subject to change. Remember that? They teased that phrase early in the night on SmackDown. And at the very end, card subject to change. And then Kevin Owens came out and they announced that match with Roman Reigns instead of Adam Pierce. That's what it felt like tonight. Because at the very end, after everything was said and done, Scarlett repeats the same phrase she said at the beginning of the night. Everything happens for a reason. Every moment happens for a reason. So we get that tag match tonight. And as I said already at the beginning of the show and in the middle of the show, going up against the AEW women uh, battling it out in a lights out, no disqualification, anything goes match. And here's the most pathetic thing about it. And I brought it up earlier, but the more I think about it, the more you really, you know, you take notice of it. If AEW was live, I can understand WWE putting that type of an NXT main event out there. The fact that a week later, they knew about this match five days ago. And, you know, professional... Even as professionally as something tells me, Adam Cole probably told WWE, you know, uh, Britt, tore, they tore the house down. I'm sure WWE knew 
what they were facing. They have five days notice. And the best they could come up with is Finn Balor and Karrion Cross teaming up to take on for the tag titles. And when they first announced at the beginning of the night, I said, oh, this kind of feels like Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair pairing up together. And maybe Scarlett is kind of Reggie, you know, in some you know way. You know, you know what I mean by that. Like, here's a team that are going to face each other and they put him as a tag team for a tag title shot, and it ends up with a falling out. It's just that this is NXT. This is not Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. So we come to the conclusion in two hours, where in WWE SmackDown, the conclusion is four weeks, five weeks. So we have that main event to look forward to later on. And what a fucking disappointing main event. I mean, it did what it needed to do in the storyline. You know, they're having a very bland match. And Finn Balor kind of inadvertently hit Scarlet. So Karrion Cross goes nuts. Starts beating the shit out of Finn Balor. Suddenly Adam Cole doesn't care. Even though Adam Cole was outside that he almost got run over, run off the road by Kyle O'Reilly. No dash cam footage, by the way. That was cheesy too. That was cheesy also. I mean, I understand trying to incorporate real life into things, but for those that didn't see it, Adam Cole came out, cut a promo earlier on Kyle O'Reilly. Didn't need him anymore, blah, 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 blah. Um, for some reason, William Regal bans Kyle O'Reilly from being in the building. So Kyle O'Reilly's on the screen, and he's going to do everything he can to try to end Adam Cole's career. Okay, fine. Later on, some weird segment. Kyle O'Reilly's in a cop car. And Adam Cole is like two or three cars up. And Adam Cole is like yelling at Kyle O'Reilly. It looked like a bad edition of... What was that TV show I used to like? Uh, 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 Live PD? That still pisses me off. It's off the air. Live PD. Like, you got, like, somebody in the in the cop car and the significant other is yelling from, like, a couple of cars away. Road rage incident. Tried to run them off the road. They somehow are in front of the, of the Capitol Wrestling Center. What did, what did Adam Cole do? Did he like park his car three blocks away, got in his car, and then he tried to run him off the road? It was just like it was so dopey that it happened right in front of the Capitol Wrestling Center. Like he tried to cut me off the road. I mean, usually when you try to cut someone off the road, like they go on the road first, then you try to cut them off. It was so goofy. What was even worse about it is they were trying to make it real with some expletives that were censored out. But William Regal is interviewed a few minutes later, and William Regal says, listen to this, if the cops drop their charges, I want both of them at NXT next week. Now, you in just suspension of disbelief storyline, you ban Kyle O'Reilly today because of what he did last week, but cutting someone off with their car and trying to commit vehicular homicide, that is okay to have him show at the building next week. It's so stupid. It reminded me of naked gun stuff again. When remember the na scene of naked gun with the 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 um, the Queen of England and Drebin like ends up like landing in a cake with her and her legs are pinned up in the air and it's all over the newspapers and it's the biggest travesty and then they say as comedy oh it was that was very nice for the queen to drop all the charges it's like William Regal if the police drop all the charges i don't think WWE realizes how dumb that comes across they have made William Regal to look like a clown so many times this year, I don't know if people have realized that. I know it's not the real queen, obviously, David. 
I'm so you know I'm surprised we're able to get naked gun references in here, but um, that was just that was just awful. I mean I don't mind the segment, but he tries him to run him off the road. And it happens right in front of the Capitol Wrestling Center. There's no, like, cars, like, you know, like, one is, like, this way and this way. And it's kind of like a visual. You no, know, just Kyle O'Reilly is sitting in a, in what's supposed to be a police car. I don't know. It, it, that kind of felt like wrestle crap. Um, crazy Cruiserweight. What if the Grizzly Young veterans start doing a promo like, we got our families back in England, we can't keep causing this viewership to drop? Yeah, fantasy land. Fantasy land. The Grizzly Young veterans, they need the, like I said last week, they need the Grizzled Old Dentist. I, you know what was weird today? I don't know, was there a video upgrade today? I, tonight, you know, whenever I watch NXT through my computer, I always go on a USA Network website. And then it logs me into YouTube TV, and that's how I watch it. Tonight, I did something different. I logged into YouTube TV directly and watched it through YouTube TV, and I was watching like 4K quality tonight. I was like, holy shit, the quality's like a thousand times. It made, now, just imagine their teeth in like 4K. But um, I, I, I hate saying it, man. And I'm going to go. I'm going to go there. Imperium, other than Walter, they do nothing for me. Watching Marcel Barthel taking on um, Tommaso Ciampa today and Ciampa beating him, I put Imperium minus Walter in the same category I put the Grizzled Young Veterans in the same category as Oni Larkin and Danny Birch. It's nothing against them. But I look at Oni Larkin and Danny Birch. I look at Imperium minus Walter. And I look at the Grizzled Young Veterans. I look at those six wrestlers. And I say to myself, unless they are thrown in a comedy segment, like I have predicted in the past with FTR and other stuff, they're never going to click with the, you know, mainstream wrestling audience that tunes into WWE slash NXT programming. Those, it has, Crazy Cruiserweight, it has nothing to do with the fact that they were all European wrestlers. There are a lot of wrestlers from NXT UK that I like. Jordan Devlin has a fucking personality. Jordan Devlin in the ring with Santos Escobar earlier, and, you know, just when he cuts a promo, he's got cockiness to him. He's got confidence to him. He's embarrassing in showing up Santos Escobar. And then he headbutts Escobar, even though it was on the shoulder. But Jordan Devlin's got a personality to him. You know, doing this or just going on the mic, MSK, you have the balls to do that. And then the teeth are like all like in different positions. Those six guys had been on TV for WWE for a very long time. And I've been doing a quarter hour ratings now for about eight months. And Imperium, we got to start looking at their numbers. But those two other tag teams, Lorkin and Birch and the Grizzled Young Veterans, their quarter hours have been some of the worst and consistently worse. Why do you think Everrise is off TV? I was bringing it up with Everrise. Everrise is not European, I don't believe. You know, you know, if you think about them, we started noticing. Remember those weeks we started noticing about Everrise every week? What the hell are these numbers? You think WWE took them off because you deserve a break. You deserve a vacation. You've done so much for us. You know, even Brizango. I hate to say it. Brizango's ratings suck on NXT. Why? Because fans don't have any confidence that WWE's really going to push them. They got the tag titles that time, which I was extremely ecstatic about, but their ratings still sucked because people every week were like, okay, are they going to lose it this week? Wow, they kept it on them. Oh, they're going to lose it next week. There was never any confidence. that It didn't feel like WWE put the ball behind them. Yes, yes, come on. Will ever rise, ever rise? We always have that one queued up. Never take that one away. 
Kylie Ray is making her in-ring return at Warrior Wrestling Stadium Series June 5th. Oh, okay, cool. I want to check that out. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how everything changes between now and June 5th. Um, like I said, you know, I appreciate everybody who took notice that what we talked about Monday about WrestleMania and the ticket delay, everything we said was 100% correct. I will tell you right now, and like I said, I don't want to get into it tonight. We'll talk about it tomorrow and Friday because we really don't talk about Raw or SmackDown on Wednesdays. But they announced, I think, 25,000 seats for WrestleMania. I already know from my same source that they're setting up the pods and that if they are able to set it up and have room left over, they will announce additional tickets on sale. 25,000 is not the final number. So if you miss out on tickets, you know, you stand by because everything, the way they set it up, they'll be, they will be putting some additional tickets on sale. So, so let's get into NXT a little bit more. Austin Theory versus Dex, Dexter Loomis. Um, the way is not there today. I don't know why Indy Hartwell couldn't be there, but basically Austin Theory is on its tablet. Gargano and Larea home tonight is the final step for his therapy. And Austin Theory is concerned that they're not there. And Johnny Gargano is telling him that, no, this is your last step of the therapy. You got to do this alone. Okay. So Austin Theory loses. All right. Now, if you follow the whole storyline from the kidnapping up to now, you had this almost like some people said it was almost like a Florence Nightingale effect that maybe Austin Derry kind of like dug Dexter Loomis. And yes, Johnny Gargano crushed his feelings by doing the whole thing with the doctor. But it was very a weird match to have because a lot of people may forget Austin Theory and Dexter Loomis had a match on NXT last year. If you would have watched this tonight, you would have thought at some point you were watching last year's match. The lack of emotion and the lack of weird factor was missing for a good part of that match. You would have thought that Austin Theory, it would have been... Remember, I'm not trying to compare the two, but you remember when Goldust first was Goldust? He had the few Razor Ramon. He was trying to get in Razor Ramon's head. And then at the match, it got very uncomfortable when, you know, Goldust was doing what he was doing to Razor. I'm not saying to do anything sexual tonight, but there was no mind games going on. It, most of that match just felt like a regular fucking match. Stockholm Syndrome. Did I say Florence Nightingale? In fact, I'm sorry. Stockholm sy Syndrome. Yes, Indy Hartwell's tweets about Dexter Loomis are funny. She even had a funny one tonight. They were talking about St. Patrick's Day, and they had, I think, a whole bunch of um, uh, Irish wrestlers in the picture. And she's like, how come I'm not on here? Everybody says that I'm green. So she's pretty funny on her Twitter. I, I like Indy Hartwell. Early on... Yeah, it was just something about her. You know, it just, it looked like she was on some type of sedative all the time. But now I'm starting to get it with her. So she's very good. Javier is asking, will we get Zaya Lee versus Io Shirai uh, down the line? Yeah, it's possible. It's very possible. I mean, if Raquel Gonzalez doesn't take the belt off of her first, um, I guess we could bring it up now. Well, let me just finish Theory and Austin first. Theory and Austin. Loomis and Theory. Or Loomis and Austin, how you look at it. So they have their match. And at the very end of the match, Austin Theory is out on the mat. Dexter Loomis offers his hand. Austin Theory is reluctant. Then he takes his hand. And Dexter Loomis pulls him up. And then... Austin Theory has this big smile on his face. And he's like, I knew, I knew. And he's hugging him and he's all happy and everything. 
and Dexter Loomis tries to put him in his finisher. And Austin Theory gets pissed off, and he's like, I knew it, I knew it. Just to have Dexter Loomis put him in his vice sleeper hold anyway. Austin Theory goes, night, night. And I'm saying to myself, okay, this storyline has come to a very stupid conclusion between Theory and Loomis. There was very little psychological factor in this match. I want to see if it hybrids into Theory versus Gargano, which I think could very well happen. So, um, I understand the end was the mind games, but Austin Theory should have had this very awkward reluctance to getting in that match. The fact that he was in it all alone after the therapy sessions, he should have been afraid to get into the ring. The minute Dexter Loomis touched him, <laughs> you, you see where I'm going? Like, none of that. It looked a lot like their match from last year. It was me, Austin. Yeah, I could be. You know, I picture Gargano. If Gargano turns on theory, I could picture Gargano saying, it was me, Austin. It was me all along. So, um, so they had their match. As I said earlier, Ciampa uh, had the match with Bartell. Thatcher was not there. We don't know why. Um, he beats Marcel Barthel pretty handedly. And then Walter comes out. And it was I, I was surprised to see Walter because we were not sure if he was going to be coming to the States this quickly. But he shows up, and he fucking nails, like I said earlier, one of those chops to Ciampa. One of those chops that you almost feel like privileged to at one time in your career. You know, you almost want to have a shirt made up like I was chopped by Walter. Like, that's one of those shirts. Like, you know, um, but Walter nails him with a chop. Imperium beats him down, but everybody, all they cared about was Walter in this. So it looks like we'll probably have Walter versus Ciampa at TakeOver. Walter's a fucking beast, man. Walter is a beast. He is a beast. Um, Legato del Fantasma, they beat Brazango pretty handedly, I might add. After the match is over, Santos Escobar's at the NXT announcer's table. Like, where is he? With Jordan Devlin. And the music hits. They had the confrontation, like I said earlier. And they will have a match at TakeOver to determine who is the NXT Cruiserweight Champion. I know we talked about that about a month ago. And you know that is going to be an awesome, awesome match. Um, the match that kind of surprised me tonight, and that's why... I believe it was done to start setting up the breakup between Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. Zoe Stark took on Dakota Kai with Raquel in a corner. Now, we have high praise for Zoe Stark already. And that an excellent match. Dakota Kai gets the win. Gets the win. Hits like her version of the, what is it, like the go to sleep but um, beats Zoe Stark. I'm like, whoa. You know, Zoe Stark, you know, they really, like, got her in there with some momentum. You know, you're hearing behind the scenes that, you know, they are you know want to keep her stock elevated. And they had a great match, and Dakota Kai gets the win. And I'm like, whoa, that's interesting. Then, then it makes sense. Io Shirai comes out there. And that's done, number one, to get the focus off of the fact that Zoe Stark just lost. It also sets up the storyline that has to go down within two weeks. Because three weeks from now is takeover. Io Shirai comes out there. You have Dakota Kai in the ring and Raquel Gonzalez in the ring. Best way I could describe it is you have Io Shirai walking to the ring this way. Dakota Kai is here. Raquel Gonzalez is here. Io Shirai's got a contract in her hand. So you know it, she's either going to give it to Raquel and be a one-on-one, -on -one, or 
it could be possibly a three-way. There's no way you were going to go Io Shirai versus Dakota Kai at TakeOver. Io Shirai enters the ring. She's got the contract. And she walks around Dakota Kai to get to Raquel Gonzalez. And, man, that looked like a huge diss on TV to Dakota Kai. And Raquel Gonzalez is like this tall, and Io Shirai is like this tall, and she's looking up at her, and she just smashes the contract in Raquel's chest. She wants her at TakeOver. So, like I said, this is to start the beginning of the end of Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. That's why Dakota Kai got that win tonight against Zoe Stark. Yes, we did not expect Zoe Stark to lose this quickly and to Dakota Kai. But with Dakota Kai's win, she has reason why she feels she should be able to challenge for the Women's Championship. Dakota Kai has some very important wins this year in 2021, albeit with Raquel Gonzalez, which is why she feels she should be in a Women's Championship match. That will be part of the storyline. Dakota Kai wants to go for gold. Thing is, though, is Raquel Gonzalez and Io Shirai is a one-on-one -on -one match. That will cause the fallout. That is why, also, they set up the tag match for next week. Next week, it'll be Io Shirai and Zoe Stark taking on Raquel and Dakota Kai. And you know, we've talked about it here. and You will see it start to go in full force. The beginning of that teasing of a split up that will start next week so um benjamin says so i think it's really sowing the seeds in dakota and raquel splitting up they need raquel gonzalez to be a big single star and dakota kai you know there's been rumors of her going to the main roster for a while now but yeah yeah this is set up to cause some type of jealousy. Look, again, 95% of what I do on these shows is just discussion, opining. If I break a news story here and there, I do. But most of it is opining. I'm not reporting that as news. I'm reporting it based on what I see and where I see things going. So, yeah, that is going... Dakota Kai in storyline, look, you just crowned women's tag team champions. It still baffles me that people don't get it yet why they put the belts on Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez last week, even though they lost the titles an hour later. It, I, again, I, I don't think it's stupidity. I think people purposely put it out there for clickbait to try to force conversation that's not there. They put them in the record books because you can never take that away from them. They are the first ever WWE NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. That's why they were handed those titles, to give them that acknowledgement. Now they're in the record books. Now you could start the split. And trust me, when that happens... Once again, like I said, you know, I, I'm not going to do clickbait to all of you out there. And yes, I can do teasing of fake things. You know, oh my God, you know, could this person... And then it doesn't happen. Look at all those news reports that you read that, oh, Vince McMahon, with the exception of the heavyweight titles, Vince McMahon, all the matches for WrestleMania are all thrown up in the air. I mean, not... Everything that's been talked about is still on pace. Everything. Everything. Remember? Asuka, concussion. May not compete at WrestleMania. Uh, six hours later, she's fighting uh, Shayna Baszler and Raw. People out there are desperate to try to get any attention to themselves. So they're putting this garbage out there that's just not true. Well, VJ, if you heard Hulk Hogan is all elite, and if you're whatever you're smoking, send me some. Send me some. Uh, Zia Lee cuts a promo. You know, just to keep her name out there. 
Um, like I said, notice for the last two weeks the lack of Cameron Grimes. Just putting it out there. Um, and again, that goofy segment with William Regal. If the police drop their charges, I want them in NXT next week. So goddamn cute, man. That is so ridiculously awful. Um, what else did we get tonight? Uh, holy shit. We got into all the matches except for the main event. I'm looking down my list. I don't think there is any other matches other than the main event. Yeah, I think that was it. So the main event, Finn Balor and Karrion Cross teaming up to take on only Lorcan and Danny Burch for the tag titles. And as we said earlier, it was a very bland match. And the whole story of it was Finn Balor inadvertently hit Scarlett, which made Karrion Cross snap. Which makes sense. Karrion Cross starts beating the shit out of Finn Balor. Snaps. Throws Finn Balor back in the ring. Finn Balor eats the pin from Lorcan and Birch. They retain. And then Karrion Cross, you know, is on Finn Balor more. And Scarlett is fine. It's fine. And then she's like leaning over to Finn Balor. I thought she was going to give him a little kiss on the, the forehead or something. But she's she ends the show. Like at the beginning, every moment happens for a reason. And uh, what was Kevon Lewis asking? What's Gail Kim doing these days? She's pretty much retired. You know, she's had a very illustrious career, and you know, she's you know she still makes appearances. I think she was doing some type of project with Lita and others. There was some type of video project being worked on, but. Um, you know the, I near. I agree with you. And by the way, near. Thank you. I'll I'll get a follow up on your second email tomorrow. We have some more like personal conversation. But yeah, Carrying Cross. They kind of played it off as a baby face with the Santos Escobar stuff. Then last week it was mutual respect with Finn Balor. Now look tonight. I don't blame in storyline Carrying Cross beating the shit out of Finn Balor. You know, even if it was an accident, you put your hands on my woman. I beat you up, plain and simple. Um, you know, but there was never any doubt in my mind as far as the tag titles are concerned. They're having a takeover match in three weeks. What do you think? This is Sasha and Bianca on steroids that, oh, they're going to win the belts. And then next week, they'll lose the belts. And then a week later, they'll have the falling out. And then you have takeover. No, it's stupid. It was never any thought that they were going to win those belts tonight. But again, that going up against the women's match, as violent as it was, as hardcore as it was, bloody, doesn't matter. I will always remember this night. Go back and watch it. I'll always remember this night. And if you sync it up, you'll see what I'm talking about. And thank God somebody posted the photo. I will always remember this night of watching AEW main event on my TV, watching the NXT main event on my computer. And trust me, I got a big screen. I got a 46-inch screen on my computer thing. So, you know, I got, it's a big screen. I'm watching them side by side. And I'm looking at NXT's screen. And they're about to go to commercial. And Finn Balor is standing in the corner outside the ring next to Karrion Cross. They're just chilling. You could have counted to 15. I'm not exaggerating. Go back and watch it. You could have counted to 15. And all they're doing is just standing there and standing there and standing there. And I turn to look at my TV and I see this. And I'm saying to myself, you had five days notice. Five days notice of what you were going up against in that main event, and you have them standing there, almost talking like, you know, like, oh, did, 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 did you see the Knicks last night? You see what happened with them at Philly? They were awful. Not very good. Not very good. That main event was very disappointing. 
the outcome was pretty much what we expected it to be. But it just felt like it was going through the motions. Ratings, what do I think this week? I think AEW does a better rating this week uh, because of the hype of the main event um, with the women. They should be very proud if that main event gets a kick-ass rating. Um, J.P. Sweeney. Oh, J.P. Sweeney, what's going on, man? Thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words. Like I say, you know, after all these years, to see all of uh, you just hanging out, you know, it just keeps me going, man. I'm enjoying it. Enjoying it. You know, like I said, full steam ahead. No excuses. No late. Just put it out there. As long as I can physically and mentally do it, I will. But ratings this week, boy, NXT came within 40,000, I think, of last week. This week, that ain't happening. I think AEW is going to substantially beat NXT this week. You look at the card up and down, um, especially with the how Austin Theory... <laughs> And Dexter Loomis came off, and look, let's be honest. We've had Finn Balor take on Roderick Strong. We've had Finn Balor take on Adam Cole. And both of those ratings sucked. You think him teaming up with Karrion Cross against Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch tonight is suddenly going to pop a number? Maybe for a couple of people on Twitter, it was must-see TV. You know, it'll... It, yeah, it, that was terrible to put that up there. So I think AEW this week is going to handedly beat NXT. I say AEW this week. Maybe the rating is not as strong as last week, but I'm going to say AEW this week does 700, 7, 790. No, that sounds awfully high. I'll go with, you know what? That main event, though, was solid. Um, I'm going to go with 788. I'm going to say AEW does 788. NXT, I think, does, wow. I, I better off predicting NXT first. I think NXT does 6, 680. No, that sounds high, too. I'm going to go with 644. 644 for NXT and AEW. I think I'm going to raise it just to drop. I'm going to say AEW does 797. No, I'm going to go 771 to 644. Overall, that's going to be a disappointing number. You add, well, that still sounds awfully low. It does. Um, all right, I, you know what? AEW, I'll go a little higher. I know I'm going to probably regret it. I'm going to go 821 for AEW. And NXT, I'm going to go 655. So 821 to 655. That is still under 1.5 million viewers, which is disappointing. But 821 to 655, I'm going to go with that. 821 to 655. We'll see. By tomorrow night, we'll know. We'll mention it briefly tomorrow night. Friday is when I'll get into the quarter hour breakdown and we'll see what these numbers actually did. Uh, do I think the women's main event is going to break a million that quarter hour? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But I think it should, anything under 850 would be a disappointment. I think anything under 850 for the main event for AEW would be a disappointment. So, 655 feels awfully low, Benjamin. I agree. And it probably is awfully low. It might be more like 680, but I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. I was not feeling a lot of NXT tonight. And you go back and you look at those matches on paper, it just felt like a very underwhelming episode. Look, three weeks from now, we got TakeOver. Obviously, things are going to amp up. But this week, it almost felt like they knew what they were going up against. So let's put something out there, you know, but it just felt very underwhelming. But with that said, I am going to jet out of here. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in once, once again. And um, like I said, I think the biggest debate tonight 
was do we use this as the banner for YouTube or do we use this as the banner for YouTube? I'm going to leave it as Mr. McCon because of all those months that I said that it made me feel like Vince McMahon in Memphis in 93. So, um, yeah, for my international friends that stood up, even though I know some of you out there, it's like 3 p.m., 2 p.m. where you live. But uh, I thank you all for the support, as always. Much love. One final time before I get out of here, if you enjoyed tonight's show, I would greatly appreciate it. If you smash that like button, the more you do it, I mean, I know a lot of you do it on the replay, but the more you do it, the more it tells YouTube you enjoyed the shows and they recommend it to others. So I appreciate it. But uh, if you're around tomorrow night, like I said, join me, 10.05 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm not going to take the magazine out again, but we'll do another contest similar to what we've done before, and we'll throw that Hardy's Edge and Christian sign magazine up, and if somebody wins, they don't want that, they could go for cash instead, and uh, we'll have some fun. We'll have some fun. So everyone have a great night, all the best, and I will catch you tomorrow night, 10.05 p.m. Eastern. Join me here. And uh, post your comments in the comment section. Let me know what you liked and disliked tonight about AEW and NXT. Your praise for the women's match. You know, do you feel the historic value like I felt it tonight? You think Britt Baker won even though she lost? You know, just her progression in her career? Um, let me know what you thought. And uh, I will definitely respond to your comments as I try to do all the time. So everyone, take care, everyone. Have a great night, and uh, I'll catch you all Thursday night, 10.05 p.m.